Hello class, uh, we are group number 6 we are going to present a Mechanical Sprints project. My name is Alfredo Bender, Hansel Castro, Hamid Lani. For our project, uh, we are going to uh, present uh, the problem statement, uh, the motivation uh, that got us uh, to this project and also the background of the Mechanical Sprints device. For the product statement, we are going to talk about the literature survey of the mechanical sprints, also the design, the design features for each uh, type of mechanical sprints devices, and lastly, a description in depth of different types of mechanical sprints. Our motivation for our project was to acquire as much knowledge as possible in order to understand how mechanical sprints devices work. Also, uh, we like to understand the design processes for each uh, design component. And lastly, uh, the applications for mechanical sprint devices used in industry uh, in today's uh, world. Mankind has used elastic characteristics of natural materials throughout history. In 1676, a famous physicist, Robert Hooke, invented or discovered Hooke's law. Um, also, fluids uh, behave as a compression springs, such as fluid pressure systems. Um, also, mechanical springs uh, devices are applied in industries uh, such as motive power, return motion, shock absorption, control of vibration, force measurements, and retaining of rings, etc., among others. Lastly, there are many various types of uh, mechanical springs devices, but one of the most important ones are the compression and extension sprints. Uh, this is, as you can see, it's a bow used for the Englishmen that uh, fought against the France. Uh, it's a simple but very powerful, as you can see, uh, bow that roughly um, can uh, generate uh, 470 pounds of force. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a very powerful spring made of U. Uh, this chart you can see right here is uh, the chart for spring characteristics. You can see this line right here is a progressive line. It's like a, it's like a slope, like a parabola uh, upside down. Um, also the second line is a straight line right here. So another characteristic of the sprints. It's a very straight line. So sometimes it's used for cars industry. Uh, our industry we have just like this uh, line right here. Uh, this line, uh, third one, is a parabolic one, is a degressive line, and the fourth one is uh, this line that is up there is like constant, and the fifth one that uh, goes straight here and then goes up uh, immediately is called the progressive uh, with the knee uh, line. Well, I'm going to talk about helical springs. Helical springs are made of a wire coil um, in helical form. They can have different areas like circular areas, rectangular or square area. Um, as you can see from this picture, we can, in order to design helical springs, we should take into account many different factors. One of the, the most important are the free length, the mean diameter, the wire diameter, the pitch, and the coil angle. <coughs> well, um, now we're going to talk about different type of uh, helical springs, as, as I've mentioned before. The, the three main types of helical springs are compression, uh, extension, and torsion spring. Right now we're going to talk about compression spring. They are open coil helical springs that resist a compressive force. Basically, as you can see from the, um, this picture, that's how um, a compression spring looks like. We have a component on each end, or you can also apply the force with your hands uh, toward the center of the spring. Basically, you're trying to apply the force and reduce the length of the spring. At the same time you're applying the force, this type of spring apply a resistant compression force opposite to the ones that you're applying. So basically, you're trying to reduce um, the spring length and he is trying to recover its original, its original length. 
Another type of helical sprain are extension sprains. As you can see from this picture, this, uh, this is how um, extension sprain looks like. Uh, this type of sprain, they have a hook or an eye, circular eye, on, on each end in order to connect um, the components. Um, this type of sprains, uh, sprain, they can absorb and store energy to a pulling force. On this type of sprain, uh, you're applying, you're pulling a force on the central axis. After applying the, that force, the spring try to apply an opposite force to the one that you're applying in order to bring the component to their original position. Uh, lastly, uh, we're going to talk about torsion spring. These type of springs, they can store and release angular energy or maintain a, si a system in place. This type of spring, we have a component applying um, a torsional force that will reduce the spring length and at the same time the spring will um, create an angular energy, will release angular energy in order to push the components back. Um, these type of springs they can be found on garage doors, clayboard, and hinges. Um, this type of, depending on the application, these type of uh, springs they can have clockwise or counterclockwise rotation. Well, now that we talk about helical springs, another we were very interested on this topic, and we gonna we were ahead and studied like different type of springs. One of the amazing, the more important that we found. Are, are they call this spring, which they are so called Bennyville um, springs. They, this type of spring, they have a constant, they are designed with a constant um, thickness and they function as compression springs. Um, this type of springs, they can be uh, stacked on two different ways. One is on parallel, as you can see on the top right. Um, basically, on parallel, you have one spring on top of the other. This will mean that we have a constant um, deflection on every single um, spring. The other type um, of stacking for this spring is on series. You can see on the bottom um, right. Um, when you stack this spring on series, uh, we are reducing the spring constant, which means that we're decreasing the, the we are increasing, sorry, the deflection on the spring. This type of spring, they can be used to secure fastener, distribute the load, and absorb vibrations. Another type of spring that we're interested in on, on learning more are the leaf springs. So this, this picture shows what a um, leaf spring looks like. Basically, this type of spring, they're used on suspension wheel vehicles, and they can spread the load over the vehicle sh um, chassis. Uh, I'm going to speak uh, more about the spring materials that are the most commonly used. We have the music wire, which is a high carbon steel alloy. It's used for applications that do not exceed a temperature of 120 Celsius. The second, we have the stainless steel, which is the most common used spring. It's really good for many, many applications, and it also should not exceed a temperature of 260 degrees Celsius. We have the oil tempered, which is cold drawn, uh, heat treated before fabricated. Also, we have the Ligulite. It's also cold drawn and heat treated, and it's really good for corrosion uh, resistance. <coughs> we have the carbon valve, which is the last, and it's, it's really good for uh, cyclic applications, and it's also cold drawn and heat treated before its fabrication. As we can see in the schedule, we have uh, <coughs> the material, which we had just mentioned, and the normal analysis of it, the maximum operating temperature, the rock wall hardness, and also the purpose of each uh, material. Lastly, we have a salt work that we developed and designed. It's a torsion spring, as you can see, and uh, <coughs> it's really good for many applications, like uh, the garage uh, door, and many other. Thank you for listening.